Dun 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 Welcome everyone, Adam. The Woo here, coming to you from the Tallahassee Automobile Museum. Today we're gonna have a lot of fun. And that is no bull. Join me, shall you? As I make my way from the front sign and driveway towards the very large building and entrance, I'm noticing this Star Wars relic, a fully armed and non-operational TIE fighter. Just see the gun there? Sitting out in the elements, all weather-worn. This platform has been built, a makeshift stage, just to heighten the experience to get a better view of Uncle Sam. But you can't get too close to him. He's got, he's got a fence around his feet. In my former travels, I have passed this property a few times. It's either been closed or I've been in too much of a hurry to stop. I have, however, stood in this courtyard, but I've never been indoors. Today, I'm gonna change that. Whoa, there's a gator. A 1930 rat rod and it's only about waist high on me. So right here is my belt. Be a tight squeeze getting inside there, but how cool would it be cruise around in that bad boy? This 1975 Cadillac Coupe de Ville has been named the Elvis Mobile. However, it was not owned by the king as stated on that pamphlet. But check out the paraphernalia in here. There's even a skull right there between the seats. It's not just automobiles in here. This gun belonged to the one and only Buffalo Bill. Right there, he held that thing. This case is full of, no, no pun intended, full of case knives for sale in that case. But I'm noticing one item that's not for purchase is this NASA Bowie knife. Obviously getting into the heart of the museum now old sports cars on either side of me. Burt Reynolds down there in that frame photo. And this is the car that he made famous in Smokey and the Bandit. It's not the one used in the film, it's a couple years older. In fact, it's a 1979. Stated here, there are only 10 miles on the car. It's only been driven 10 miles. Powell Crosley used to make radios like this one and refrigerators years later. He decided to try his hand at the Super Convertible. This one is a 1950 model, and it states down there that he went on to own the Cincinnati Reds. He bought them, he bought the Reds. In 1948, there were only 51 of these Tuckers created due to financial reasons. And this is number five of the 47 that still exist. It was also used in a movie. The 1988 Francis Ford Coppola film, Tucker the Man in His Dream. That's a movie car right there. Speaking of movie cars, this needs no introduction. Of course, from Back to the Future, the DeLorean. But they were made before the movie came out. This one, 1983, Back to the Future, didn't arrive in theaters till 1985. Of course, now when you see that, you think of Doc Brown and Marty and not John DeLorean. Funny how things work out. Just noticed all the way on the opposite side of the building is something Back to the Future S. It's like a banner there. It's not by the car, it's just hiding over in the corner. Before this 1956 Chevrolet Bel Air gets running, it needs its oil change, and that's what this lady is down there doing, doing a little maintenance work. She has her bags packed, and once this thing gets cranked up, she's going on a road trip. As I've stated before, I do not know a lot about classic cars. I have learned a little bit over different places that I have been over the years, but most of the information I will be giving in this video is written, and I am reading off of these little information placards located in front of each car. Not only was this car the first American one that was made of a fiberglass body, take a look at the door. It's the first that had the door slide into the part of the car itself, into the fender side. It's the first one to do that. The 1954 Kaiser Darren Roadster. Have you ever seen a horse made out of completely automotive parts? 
That's what this guy is constructed of, from his head to his neck to his torso and legs, all car parts welded together. Mannequin version of Marilyn Monroe, I'm guessing. I think that's supposed to be. Marilyn Monroe is standing in front of this Cadillac Eldorado convertible, which Dwight D. Eisenhower rode in a similar car in his inauguration parade. 18 cents a gallon is the price posted on that gas pump, and the company that made this was called Charmeter. They made gas pumps and clocks. That's why both are featured in the same item. They stopped making these in 1936. This is a relic. Someone's about to go on a vacation. You're bringing this along? You gotta pick it up and stick it back in the back. Plenty of room back there. Yeah, there's plenty. You can bring that. There's there's plenty of room. Going to the grocery store is how we get our milk these days, but back in the 50s, you had to have this milk truck deliver it. And this 1909 Hup Mobile, they call it, strongly resembles a fire truck, but I don't think there's any hoses or items to put out fires on there, but it looks just like a fire truck. Quite a few Model T's starting with a 1912 and a 1916 and a 1914. Down on the floor, a century old tire hasn't decomposed, still holding strong. And a panda bear playing a guitar. He can't believe his eyes. He's got his glasses tilted down to get a better view of uh, 1894. That's right, 1894. Durye. Hoping I pronounced that correctly, one of the oldest surviving fully manufactured American pre-production vehicles. Wow. Some serious history right there. I really like this place, not only because they have all this, which I totally expected, but they have random items like this jukebox, a 1947 Mills jukebox, as well as some vintage record players. Wonder if the needles still work. Look at the name on this one. Rockola. Nice. What should we listen to? Moon Mulligan or Frank Sinatra? Among my souvenirs. That's a good one. And now for the item that drew me in. The main reason, the focal point of why I pulled off the road. I read online that they had something very fascinating and honestly, unexpected to find in a place like this. A little piece of history that is right there. The 1860 horse-drawn hearse that carried President Abraham Lincoln to Springfield, Illinois to his final resting place. Amazing to even fathom or comprehend that he would have lain right there, right behind that piece of glass, the coffin of the 16th president of the United States. Starting in Washington, D.C., made its way up to Harrisburg, Philadelphia, New York City, Albany, Buffalo, Cleveland, Columbus, Indianapolis, Michigan City, Chicago, and then to Springfield. And it wasn't all by the same vehicle. It states here, train, funeral car, ferry, and a number of horses ending with the final one that you see in front of me that took him to his tomb. Pretty much the closest I or you or anyone, for that matter, will get to Abraham Lincoln is in the spot I am now standing with my camera against the glass, looking in, looking inside. Wow, that's incredible. Can be seen distinctly in this artistic rendition right there. Now the tomb to the left is where he was originally buried, but his body was attempted to be stolen on many occasions, so they moved it to the top, built a huge monument, and now he's buried under layers and layers and feet and feet of concrete. He's no longer there at the bottom of the hill. He's up there. Replica of the gun used in the assassination can be found right down there, and this wanted poster, $50,000 reward if you had any information. Even though a number of horses would have pulled this from the front, Lincoln's own personal horse, 
that he named Old Bob walked behind with a mourning blanket over his back, paying tribute to his good friend that was placed right in there. Not an item I would have expected to see in the panhandle of Florida, completely separated from a lot of other Lincoln artifacts. But nonetheless, it sits here in this museum for all to see, as are a wide variety of classic Steinway pianos, like a half a dozen of them. But this one's missing. Where'd that one go? A meteorite? A dinosaur egg? A brain? Wait, a brain? A brain coral? Random hands? Arnold? That's right. Come on. In this section, there are a lot of insignias and badges from police officers. But down here, it states this gun was owned by Wyatt Earp. That's his revolver right there. All these items make up a vampire killing kit. If you find that unbelievable, just read this. It's documented right there in those letters. That's for killing vampires. That was just the first level. I'm now heading up this ramp to get to the second floor. This place is big. This might be more random than the bottom floor. Tractors, golfing, paraphernalia, some wooden bulls stampeding, and cash registers? If your forte are adding machines, you've come to the right place. There are a lot of adding machines. Is this a funhouse mirror? It is. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. A never ending amount of items. This place is a treasure trove. All these radios. Even a section dedicated to motorcycles. Made to look like a locomotive, it's actually a limousine that was used for a promotional reasons by Publix Pictures, also part of Paramount. Only 15 of these were made and five still exist to this day. You see the Paramount Pictures emblem and dancing girls would stand on the fenders and there in the back and stroll through Hollywood promoting the new films. No one else is up here. I'm the only one on the top floor, which is a good thing because it leaves me completely alone to enjoy this. An overload of goodness. The penguin's yellow duck. A replica Batmobile. Holy cow, this is awesome. One of the two used in the production Batman Returns. She's eyeballing it. Look at her back there. She likes it too. Not allowed to cross this railing, but back there in the distance is the Bat Ski Boat, also from Batman Returns. Heading up now into Moore's Mercantile. I wonder if, wonder if that's Moore. It's best not to try and touch him. In fact, he stated so on a sign. He's made a sign. That's how much he does not like being hugged. Plenty of products and gizmos. You have to wonder what some of this stuff does. This replica of the African Queen has an interesting nickname, which can be seen posted around the backside. Puff the magic dragon. Except of living by the sea, it could live on the sea. Because it's a boat. That's not the only seafaring vessel. These look like canoes. Well, this one's a little bit bigger, but that one resembles a canoe, but has much more comfortable seating. Whoa, that's a lot of motors. At least a hundred or more of them, to be honest. And with that, it's time to say goodbye to the Tallahassee Auto Museum. Highly recommend if you are near the Tallahassee, Florida area and you are into cars, antiques, trucks, outboard motors, boats, movie paraphernalia, miniatures, 
golfing. I came in to basically see one item, the Abraham Lincoln horse-drawn hearse, and I saw so, so, so much more. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video, but before that, please subscribe not only to this channel, The Daily Woo, where I used to do a video every day for five years, and now I just sporadically pepper them in, but also to the Adam the Woo channel. Both are free to keep updates on, to subscribe to, and get notifications when the next videos will be released out onto the internet. I have a Patreon page, Adam the Woo, on Patreon, as well as a Spreadshirt, adamthewoo.spreadshirt.com. I will see you in the next video. Vlog over.